Yes, guys, I'm sorry. Welcome to Ace Podcast Nation. Welcome to Cardiff City World. We are here for a quick five things we learned about the Bluebirds yesterday in this uh, South Wales derby debacle. Uh, it was poor from Cardiff City. There's no doubt Swansea uh, were better in every way, especially the shithousery. Uh, they were just a bit more streetwise, better quality with the ball. Played the occasion and Cardiff didn't. Uh, it was one of those things. I think this morning when we done the breakfast show, I was like still angry and still pissed off. So it was difficult to find any positives outside of Ruben Corwell. But um, look, out of four derbies this, this, this season, Cardiff City have won three. At the start of the season, we would have taken that. It's a massive improvement on the last few years. But to, to, to do so well in the three prior derbies means that it was very disappointing to, to, to turn up like that. You don't mind being beaten by the better team. You don't mind having a go and losing. But to be so, such a damp squid, to be just such a nothing... Like it was nothing performance from the majority of those players. Um, some of them worse than others. Some of them awful, attitude wise and stuff like that. We'll talk about it. Um, but I do think there maybe there's a couple of positives that we can find. We'll try our best to find some positives. Um, but as always, interested in what you guys um, think now that you've kind of calmed down a little bit and and whatnot. Like I saw some people getting the knickers in a twist about the manager. Uh, of Swansea singing anti Cardiff songs and all that shit. Like, get grip. Like, you know, if Bullet did that after the home game, we'd have been loving it. It's all part of the, the football and the banter and the rivalry. And when you lose, you've got to suck it up. You ask Liverpool fans and Jurgen Klopp this evening, you, you've got to suck it up. Unfortunately, it's horrible. It makes you sick. It ruins your weekend. Yesterday, I was fuming all day. It just couldn't bring myself to hold a conversation barely but um it just it, it is one of those things i just want to um so number one in terms of what we learned um ethan Howworth as a keeper shot stopper um very good i think he settles the defense generally yesterday he looked super nervous it, he's got to swallow his distribution like i don't know what cardiff's tactical plan was with the ball yesterday but whatever it was it was shit so either Cardiff had a bad plan, which was just lump it forward, or the players didn't go with what the tactical plan was and panicked. I, I don't know. But all Swansea did, they, initially in that first sort of 20, 20 minutes, they pressed us high and they put us under pressure and made us nervous and all the rest of it. But later in the game, particularly in the second half, they half-pressed, they just kept their shape, half-pressed until we just went long and lost the ball. And then they just come back and are back again. And then at the other end of the pitch, we just let them play out from defence constantly throughout the game with no press. The second half, there was only Ruben Corwell pressing with any urgency. And to me, that's that's got to be a tactical instruction from the coaches and managers for that game because we pressed so much against Ipswich and we were so good. And whenever we've pressed this season, we've been very, very good when we've done it as a unit. So to see Cardiff not pressing the way they did throughout the game that's got to be a tactical plan from the manager or the coaches because otherwise halfway through the game or half time or during the game, he's telling those players to get up and press together. So that's got to have been a plan. And to me, it's, it's a bad plan. At the end of the day, it's one to do a better team. And that's what it is. It's, you've, got to, you've got to take it. Like As dominant as Cardiff City were in the first game, Swansea were equally as dominant yesterday. Their players wanted it more. The, the crowd was up for it. Cardiff, some of the players, some of the younger players like um, Esperon Wilson just looked like the occasion got to him. Um, even Phillips, who's been absolutely outstanding since he's come in, he looked flustered. Um, he just couldn't keep the ball. The passing was fucking shocking. Absolutely shocking. Um, and it was just general shit day to be quite honest um it is what it is but like and one thing i gotta say uh so we'll go with number two is um i thought the swansea players were very clever like in what they were doing they were in the refs here they were winding the cardiff players up making a big deal of everything 
and like uh as as, as, as opposing fans you fucking hate it and you're like uh, harry darling what a can blah, blah, blah and you're like all these things but like if Cyopus was doing that or Gutas or whoever, if any of the Cardiff players are doing the same thing, you're praising it. Like they were clever and, and they rattled the majority of that Cardiff side. In terms of the goal, my only issue with the goal from like, I don't think it's a foul, but my only issue with it, as I said this morning, is if that's not a foul on Perry NG for the goal, fine, I don't really think it is. But then it's also not a penalty in the second half. Which obviously like, doesn't matter, but like you just want a bit of consistency in the refereeing. At least I do. Like I just want a bit of consistency. Um, in terms of the goal, I think uh, Josh Bowler's got to hold his hands up because I think if that's on the other side, Grant is at the back of that striker, putting him under pressure, and then he doesn't have the time and the composure to just stroke it into the corner. It's a good finish, but if he's got someone up his ass or Giving knocking him off balance is not as easy to to take a ball out of the air like that and place it. So <clears throat> Josh Bowler stood thirty yards out watching, and uh, unfortunately, not for the first time this year, his attitude was very poor. Didn't work hard, didn't really do anything. I was very very disappointed with the um, the mentality of a lot of those players. Like we've seen such different performances from Cardiff this year. When things are, you know, when the score line's been against us, when games have been against us, so to turn up in was, you know, it's a big game, it's a derby, and then also like Cardiff with an outside chance of the playoffs. Don't think anyone really believed that Cardiff were going to make the playoffs, or certainly not good enough to go up. But you know, it's there, so you got to play for it. And obviously, if we had been able to put in a performance and win the game, Swansea were getting sucked towards relegation. So like, there was a lot on the game. And Swansea turned up and Cardiff didn't. Now I saw um, number three, the manager. I saw I see a lot of people, well, some people criticizing the manager. I don't think the manager could have done much more, really. Like everyone was crying out, picked the same team as the Ipswich game. But I think what people forget is that the, the eleven that did the damage against Ipswich wasn't the eleven that started the game. It was the eleven that finished the game with the likes of Colwell and O'Dowder in the side. Um, the manager also put Grant through the middle, you know, things that people have been crying out for. Probably the wrong game and the wrong time to do it, but he did it. Like he tried to do his part, and I just thought he, I thought the players let him down. I gotta be honest, like Mate's an experienced international striker, and he doesn't know that Harry Darling's trying to get him a set off and, and wind him up and Come on, you've got to be better. You've got to be cleverer than that to me. Um, and even after that incident where he's kind of got away with it, because you know, if you put your forehead into someone's face, you know it's a sending off. So he was lucky he didn't get sent off. The refs didn't give us anything after that. But I mean, it's not the refs' fault that they won the game. Um, Cardiff were just very poor. And I think the thing for me was Mate, poor, poor attitude overall. Perry NG, like I've said a few times, I think Perry NG is easily top three championship right backs, if not the best, but not on yesterday's performance. Really poor, poor decision making, poor on the ball, poor positionally. Um, just had an off day. Um, I thought Gutas was okay, but you know, he made a couple of decent interceptions, but like positionally got caught out a couple of times. Um Phillips had a I thought he had um he had a couple of really, really, really good clearances, but like, just couldn't do what he normally does on the ball. Gave it away, just very sloppy. Josh Esprand, I thought, just looked like the occasion got to him. He really did. He just looked like it was all a bit too much. Just gave the away, ball away. Cyopis struggled, but I think a big part of that was the fact that his midfield partner wasn't able to get a foot on the ball and control the tempo in any way like how joe rolls doesn't get on the pitch is beyond me to me joe rolls probably should have i said in my preview joe rolls should be starting because we need someone who can keep the ball like that was how we did so well in the first game was by keeping the ball and passing it and the plan should have been what our away plan has been all season which is keep the game solid for sort of 20 30 minutes then move into the game but then keep the ball and quiet the crowd down we just never 
did that. We net our passing was awful. We just gave the ball away over and over again. Bowler added nothing going forward, even less going back. Um, I wouldn't play him much now between now and the end of the season. Um, I will talk about that in a minute, but like he's not going to be here next year. So there's other players who I would. Me and Matt talked about it this morning. There's there's other players I'd be playing ahead, ahead of him. Turnbull thought he was a little bit unlucky to be the one who got hooked at, at, at halftime, but I understand the reason that like they wanted to get Colwell in. If anything, I would have taken Wintle off and put Turnbull back because I think at least Turnbull can progress the ball, keep the ball. But there we go. Um, Carlin Grant tried hard, but just you know, just didn't really, didn't really, wasn't his day. Didn't get anything. Uh, Yaku Mate was borderline awful. Odaouda looked better. Like when he came on, he, he kind of tied down the left hand side, did a right. Didn't really get kind of isolate the fullback. And I had said before the game that I felt like Kyle Norton could be an area where kind of could target. But they just never isolated him one on one with um with Grant or with or with uh, O'Dowder. And then um Colwell I thought was like the bright spark really, did very, very well, looked at urgency, looked like it mattered to him. He worked hard, tried to tackle, tried to get stuck in, tried to put himself about a bit, had some really good touches, a couple of little balls that were very good, a couple of little balls which just got cut cut out. Be disappointed he didn't hit the target with his um that one shot. But the only bright spark for it, I thought Ollie Tanner tried as, but like, try to be the hero. And I get it. Like, it, when he came on, he would have been in his head. He'd have been, I'm going to do it again, like, do something special. And too many times he tried to beat two or three men instead of like a little one, two, and in behind. Or, or like, there was one where Ruben played him through. And if he hits the ball, the cross was it first time, I think it's. Jeju is is through, like just got tapping and he and he lays it back to Colwell and look if Colwell scores that everyone's saying what an intelligent pass it is but the the first time cross was there and it's decision making Ollie Tan is young you know he's got that creative spark but I just thought maybe he tried a little bit too hard his decision making was off um Ramsey came on I was really worried when Ramsey came on simply because I didn't really understand the logic to it like he's not fit he gets overrun playing deep for Wales when he has them. Um, and you're going to put him in a derby half fit in the championship playing deep. And, you know, he gave a, gave away a couple of free kicks, gave away the ball, did put some good set pieces in, but it was a struggle for him. And you could see he wasn't fit. That was where Rolls had to come in for me. Jeju worked hard, didn't do anything wrong, didn't do anything particularly good either. Um, I just think... And this is what the most disappointing thing for me is, is on paper and on probably on this season's performance, if you give me a midfield of Psyopis, Rawls, Colwell, Psyopis, Turnbull, Colwell, I would take that over Swansea's midfield all day long. But by having Turnbull in the number 10 and Wintle as the deep lying midfielder alongside Psyopis, Joe Allen and Grimes had so much time and they and then they you know they got the Grimes and and the other lad, the legs for Joe Allen, and they just allowed Joe Allen to just dictate it from deep. Whereas, if you've got Colwell in the ten, and you've got Rawls or Tur Turnbull next to Sioppa, someone who can keep the ball and play through the lines, you automatically then are going to get a bit more control of it. And Colwell has done such a good job when he's played in number ten this season, of put in the defensive midfielder under pressure that I felt like it was a really missed opportunity to not have Colwell in the 10 from the start to unsettle Joe Allen because Ruben Colwell has got this he's got such a big physique he's quick um Grimes is shite mate like I don't know what to tell you he had a great game yesterday well done I admit there's a reason why you're where you are but well done um but Swansea, I will do agree with one thing you said there, though. More the fight and attitude won that game more than ability. Complete bottle jobs, to be truthful. Liberty was rocking. Well, they only turn up for one game, didn't they? Liberty, like the fans and that. But, like, I don't want to focus too much on them. But, like, you are right. They had more fight, more attitude. They, they were better. 
but there we go um someone asked the, who was it who asked the question about the young players oh andrew last eight games of the season we should experiment bring some young talent uh some of the talent and youngsters on especially home games um so i think it would be brutal to for instance let's say joel colwell to put joel colwell in a, a championship game against sunderland at home on the next game like i just think you're not doing him any favors however i would start giving him and ashford ashford 20 30 minutes if they impress then maybe progress to starting them uh starting them like i just think it's too much to expect them because like when you're playing teams like sunderland and and some of these other teams who have got still lots stuff to play for like you can make or break a young player if he has a bad couple of games or and i get it you where people want to know if they're good enough and they're highly rated 100 percent get it but like i just think you got to be careful with it the way you do it and i think look joe colwell is very very highly rated by everyone in the wales setup and the cardiff setup supposedly better than his brother blah 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 but you've got to give him time give him minutes give him time and i would 100 percent ashford for me like so <clears throat> what i said this morning was on the right now josh bowler there's no point playing josh bowler for these last eight games he's not going to be here next year so let hannah have eight games from the start and see how he does and then give ashford 20 30 minutes at the end off the right or play him up front whatever like 100 percent do that um joe corwell i know he can play anywhere in the midfield from my i gather that he's better as a, like number eight sort of you know like an aggressive he's a really aggressive player but he can also pass the ball but you have to have like to me if you're going to play joe corwell for instance in the midfield you'd have to play probably joe rawls or winter with him and i'm not sure if his and i look i'm not going to pretend i've seen loads and loads and loads of him it's more from speaking to people who who have my understanding is that his best position is like alongside a defensive midfielder and i said this morning i have no idea how much english psyopis speaks and stuff but i would think if you're going to play joe colwell even for half an hour you need someone alongside him who's going to be able to kind of talk him through it you know make you know settle his nerves etc be um be interesting um don't get me wrong i i i, I maybe i slightly over exaggerated when i said he's shit. however all i'm saying is that on this season's performances there's a reason why swansea are where they are now is that because he hasn't been as good as normal grimes i'm not sure but fair play to him every derby especially the ones in swansea he turns up and he's been loyal to them so you've got to give him credit i just like i look at psyopis and i think on his day he's one of the best defensive midfielders in the championship however he was poor yesterday and as i said i think he was poor because of the choice of midfielder next to him like swansea just had so much more energy and they kept we just let kept kept just letting them pass it out and it was so frustrating to watch and maybe the manager and the coaching staff have got to take a bit of flack for that because it didn't seem like at any point they were telling cardiff to press it was just like stand off them and it's like you're, fucking, you're losing like in a derby and you're just letting them just play out from the back you're letting them settle you're letting the crowd get up for it you could tell swansea were more up for it within 30 seconds of that game starting um but yeah in answer to that question i would play the youngsters i wouldn't start them just yet probably leave starting them to the end of like the last couple of home games but i would start giving them 20 30 minutes i wouldn't play anyone now long wise who's not going to be here next year they must have some semblance of idea of who's going to stay and who's going to go so like like it's harsh but if wilson s brand is not coming back on loan next year then probably put him on the bench like um but you say swansea's press killed us swansea's press in the second half they didn't press they they held their shape sort of half pressed enough that cardiff and waited for cardiff to go long and then just 
took the ball off him every time. And it was like it's embarrassing that there was no like even right, even if the manager and the coaches don't say, Stop fucking doing that, like why not just why can't those players think for themselves? You've got to be able to adapt in game and be able to go, Oh, this is not working. We keep losing the ball. Let's do something different. And the weirdest thing about it all is all season, even when Cardiff went through that rocky spell, what we did do is keep the ball. And because the complaints was, oh, we're just side to side, backwards. It's always the same. And I just think that it's, it was very, very poor. It was one of the most frustrating games I've ever watched um, as a Cardiff fan. And we've seen some shit over, I've seen some shit over the last 30 years. But, um, yeah, that was it was infuriating to watch because I felt like the in game management of the players was dog shit. Um Andrew says we'd like to see Ashford and Ruben Corwell play more winners. Well mate, Ruben Corwell should be starting. I have no idea whatsoever why. Every time he has a couple of good games, they put him on the bench again. It makes no sense. He's the only one who looks like creating anything. He's the only one, and that's been the same pretty much the majority of the season but certainly since christmas he's the only one who looks um like creating anything he's the only one who's got any urgency and yeah i'd play him and if they're going to play look you the one option as well is as the manager said the reason he doesn't want to play grant through the middle is because grant hasn't got the physicality to be a target man i don't think you need a target man especially the way we play but what you could do is play ashford or grant through the middle and as long as Colwell's in that sort of second striker, stroke number 10 position, you've got someone who's got a bit of physicality to get on the ball. But um, yeah, spot on. The exact uh, 30 seconds in, first corner, you simply kind of just dead. I don't know whether the heads went or they just didn't have, they just didn't have the right mentality. Everything was slow and laboured. Like, I have not seen Cardiff play long ball football like that all season. Even at Ipswich last week when we were one, uh, like, one nil down or whatever with, you know, in like 90 second minute. We just, even then, we weren't just lumping it forward. It was long passes. It was direct, get it in the box and stuff, but it was passes. It wasn't just kick it up and see what happens. Poor mid. It reminded me of when Russell Slade was manager. That's how bad it was. Um, William says they were miles better in all areas. Perry NG looked terrible yesterday. I don't think he's um, Premier League standards. Some say I, I disagree with that. I think you look at Perry NG this season; he's up there with the best right backs of the league. And I think that his profile, his age, his performances, his abilities to go forward and defensive positioning, he is a Premier. Like he's he will be looked at by Premier, lower Premier League clubs. Unless they've watched yesterday, because he was poor yesterday. He was really poor. And he's normally the one of the most dependable in that side. And I just, it was a bad day, like, you know. But unfortunately for us Cardiff fans, at the Liberty, we seem to just have bad days all the fucking time. I just don't know what it is with the the mentality of the squad or the players. Like, you wouldn't believe that it was the same team which played at uh, Cardiff City Stadium earlier in the season. Or even all season. Um, that Ronald, by the way, he looks um, he looks a player. I said that in my preview that he was one to watch. Um, and he looks a real player. They'll do well to hold on to him uh, long term. Yeah, it's it's infuriating, mate. It's uh, so I'm going to put that up on screen. Um, Swansea fan, but he says you got done yesterday. What we did, uh, yours in December, so painful to see in the derby. You can feel your pale, feel your pain. It's infuriating. I right. infuriating isn't the word, man. It was like it's just I wanted to turn it off, but you don't because you're a fan and you're watching it. And you, but I just was infuriating and depressing, I think is the word, and it ruins your weekend. Um, but yeah, going back to what I was saying, I would. Anyone who's not going to be there next year, that includes out of contract players, that includes loan players who aren't going to be coming back. I just, I probably wouldn't play them next, the next couple of weeks. 
unless you know unless you have to like in like Phillips I think is out of contract at Liverpool there's no way Cardiff can afford to pay him 80 grand a week or whatever he's on if he likes it down here and he wants to join and he's willing to take a pay cut then get him because I think he's a good defender um and I think he's very like he improves the side but I think the manager if if we if we get him I think the manager will switch to three three five two although I'm not convinced Mark McGuinness will still be here next year I've got to be honest um it's some stuff that maybe he might be on his way to a a London club up top um but we shall see he's another one with the profile of him his ability on the ball his positional sense he's good at defending but he's also good on the ball and his age makes him a target for those sort of higher championship league championship clubs lower premier league clubs it's the sort of defenders they they like um so yeah be interesting so yeah wilson s brand if he's not going to be like if we can get him on loan again next year not based on yesterday's performance i probably would keep playing him if we, if he's going to be on loan again if like bowler's not going to be here fuck him off play tanner play ashford play whoever just play colwell up the right i would have played colwell up the right yesterday but uh andrew says what do you think of eli king do you think he's good enough for us next season it is tricky because I think technically I don't think he's far off like being in the squad I'm just not sure it's just like physically mentality wise I'm not sure like I've seen him I've only seen him play a couple of times in his loan spell and some highlights and in fairness he's looked pretty good it's different levels though He'll get his chance in pre-season to impress and then it's up to him um one thing i do agree with you um william says you can't rely on loans yeah no i think that's what i was saying like between now and the end of the season i want to see as little loan players play as possible the only one i'd probably play is grant because he actually cares and gives a shit. and that might be because he wants a contract with us he'd have to take a wage cut if he does um i'd rather see a mix of youngsters and and the others um and then like the other side of it as well is like next year i don't want to see a shitload of loans like be clever in the market get freezing have one or two but i don't want to see a shitload of loans because they don't care like over like they don't care you can't tell me that josh bowler when that game was finished gave a single shit. he just didn't care and you could tell he didn't care by his attitude his work rate it's just his mentality and that spreads in the team even subconsciously if you've got players who are not working hard and not caring it spreads through the team and i know or i would certainly like to think that the likes of gutas perry ng Siopis, grant i'd like to think they all really cared yesterday and for whatever reason the mentality of the team wasn't right and yeah maybe the manager needs to take a bit of bit of criticism for that i thought like tactically i thought he got it wrong with the press but i think the players like once they're over the white line it's on the players it's up, like whatever the tactics are you know it's a derby and you've got it like you go all right and if you didn't know within 30 seconds you knew it was in for a fight you knew that swansea certain players were going to try and get you sent off you knew that there was going to be tackles flying in so you've got to be up for it and Cardiff just were not up for it in any like we're one nil down in the second half we're starting to get a little semblance of like five minutes of a couple of passes together without giving the ball away well done and Swansea play out from the back from the keeper to the center backs to the midfield all the way up to the wing and the only person who pressed was Ruben Colwell only person in a whole team who pressed they're all just stood there like that's got to be tactics from the manager he has to have said stay in your shape and don't press because otherwise it makes no sense when against Ipswich you've just had one of your better performances of the season and you've done that by pressing against the Jacks back in September pressing and keeping the ball was how we won 
it doesn't make any sense to me at all. Look, I'm finding it very difficult to articulate my points, particularly on the tactical side of it and, and analysing it. I've done my best. Um, it's half hour. It's still raw. Still, um, still really, really pissed off. Like ultimately, um, and I do want to say shout out to that Jack who was in um, in the chat at the start. I thought he was in on the wind up, but he's actually contributed to the conversation, which I'm you know I'm all about that. Like I'll give credit where it's due. I'm still not having crimes though. <laughs> not really playing, man. Um, nice one. Um, by the way, if you haven't check out the podcast that i dropped on ace podcast nation seven o'clock tonight with tony rivers um talking about his new book is a really really good podcast also dropped one yesterday with um godfather of welsh hip-hop uh 40 absolute two quality podcasts if i do say so myself over on ace podcast nation please do check them out they're really really good and um, we'll be back obviously the every day this week in some form we've got the card of city phone in we're going to do some a couple of Wales podcasts later in the week as well at the build up to the big playoffs. Um, just off card, if then quickly, guys in the comments, I could see like this the yard of you in on in the, watching the show at the moment. Like, what do you think? What would your starting lineup be for Wales uh, against Finland? And do you think Wales will qualify from the playoff? It's a little uh, interesting conversation starter. Like, no way, no way Aaron Ramsey is fit to start. And to be honest with you, even if he's fit enough to start, Harry Wilson's banging form for for Fulham. And to me, Harry Wilson's got to play in that number 10, 100%. And Purdue obviously picks himself. I don't think there's a place for, for Ramsey in that starting lineup. Um, certainly not on on form, and you know he's not fit. I know he's the captain, but we made that mistake in the World Cup. We made that mistake in the World Cup, and look where it got us: playing players who were half fit, playing the players on reputation instead of picking young players who were in form and playing. We we went with you know just the old guard who weren't fit and, and we struggled. We didn't have the legs. Finland, a decent side. Um, looking at the odds, it's actually pretty even in terms of it. Um, but Finland are not in the best of form. They've lost three of the last five games. And um, it's going to be fascinating. Like, it's obviously a home tie. So you'd like to think that Wales will um, be able to get that win. Um, I think he sticks with the same formation that sort of three four three um you know danny ward will be there ben davis Woden, probably meepen with no lock clear jordan james and ampadu nailed on i think in the midfield um nico williams probably connor roberts although not a massive fan but um harry rob harry wilson absolutely has to be one of the tens uh sorry it has to be the ten and then up front probably got to be Kiefer Moore, Brennan Johnson. And then it's like, who do you go with? You've got Brooks, Broadhead playing well, Colwell playing well. I don't think Colwell's probably, I don't think he's realistically in with a start, chance of starting. Um, William says Ward, Roberts, Meepham, Roden, Davis, uh, Williams, James, and Purdue, Wilson, Daniel James and Brennan Johnson. Yeah, I admit, I think you've got to play because he plays that 3-4-3. Three, three, I think you need Kiefer Moore in there. As much as I part of me would love to see us play with that much pace up front, I think you need that focal point at the point of the system for Daniel James and for Brennan Johnson to play off. I think Kiefer Moore with Brennan Johnson on one side, um, Daniel James on the other side, and then a four behind him of Nico, Connor Roberts on either side, and Ampadu and James, but that's leaving Harry Wilson out. And this is, it's a, it's a nice headache to have, but 
like to me, I think he'll probably play Wilson over Daniel James. But to me, Daniel James and Brennan Johnson have to start. Like, and it becomes super problematic, but in a good way, because I think Harry Wilson is so informed that you have to pick him in that number 10 position. Or, like, certainly either side of Kiefer Moore, or like, you could play Kiefer Moore with Wilson and, and Joe Brennan Johnson has to play, starts for Spurs. He's good form. You need that pace off Kiefer Moore, though, and I think Kiefer Moore's got to play. It's really interesting, really interesting. Um, we'll do a couple of Wales podcasts throughout the week this week. I'm hoping to um, do something with Wales football fans if they're about. Um, we'll have, so we've got the Cardiff City phone in tomorrow, Super Kev podcast probably Tuesday. Um, Wednesday, we'll have the Flower Hour. We'll have a preview of the Wales game. And as always, Cardiff City fans, if you want to get involved, uh welsh fans if you'd like to get involved in the the welsh podcasts this week give me a shout and we'll have a chat um appreciate you all appreciate the comments appreciate everything um please make sure you follow Cardiff city world make sure you check out ace podcast nation as i say drop two bangers on uh over the weekends of uh, really really good podcasts We've got loads of stuff coming last week we dropped two interviews a day with ex Cardiff city players so uh hopefully when i see you next sunday wales will uh have won the playoff so yeah big up tomorrow's a new day come on wales